Welcome. This is the uh, new art studio for myself. Um, I'm Paula Tim, if we haven't met before. Thanks for joining the studio. Um, I have a basic setup uh, in the studio right now, but I wanted to just engage with the community and join in and all the fun that um, creatives are having in sharing creativity with each other worldwide. So today what I wanted to share with you is um, a kind of a technical thing, but it's been like my heart's desire to share this with people and technology and time have always been an issue. So I'm just going to try today. How's that? So um, what we're going to do is use an Adobe app called Adobe Mix and it's free. And um, I'm going to walk you through on a digital screen um, record with my voice. But before we get started, um, I thought I would just sort of walk us through a few of the basic setups. So um, I already have the app downloaded and I'm just going to zoom in. It's going to be reverse um, for you guys, but Photoshop Mix, that's what we're going for. So it's an Adobe product. Um, they've got a bunch of free things. Um, you need an Adobe ID, I think, usually to sign in and use those things. But it's just, it's a little bit of a simple setup. If you have any difficulties, do let me know, okay? And um, we can DM or phone chat or something to get you through that. Okay, so once you get that open, or like signed in and then opened, um, that's when my tutorial will start. But... So that you know what we're gonna do, I will tell you about that. And I'm gonna show you some pictures as well after I finish recording this video. So what I love to do um, is make digital collage art. And what does that mean? It means something different for everybody and I just wanna show you some tools so that it can mean what it needs to for you. So um, a little backstory on me is that I've had health issues since I was about 25 and I'm 46.5 right now. And um, so over these years that I've wanted to be a creative person, um, the time convalescing on the couch and being sequestered, much like we are right now, with limited supplies or limited mobility or limited energy, limited physical mobility as well. So it kind of pertains to right now. So it's pretty inspiring. Um, so again, um, depending on your abilities at the time and right now, you may have some partially finished projects that are in your sketchbook um, or a sketch that you really loved that you never really wanted to develop further because you just fell in love with it in its raw form and the fear of pushing it further um, and the risk of losing its authentic original value versus where you could push it with more color or paint or whatever stopped you from doing anything more with it. Well, if you can sign up for that, that's me 100%. So I left a lot of sketchbooks in their black and white form because I just kind of, you know, it was that thing. It was the intersection of fear of pushing it further and love of where it's at right then. So I just honored that space until it was time to graduate those images. And some of them did, but some of them didn't. And so my art practice, because of my health and the mobility issues into art, I've been finding ways in my practice that kind of incorporate that. And now that I am a pretty healthy person, I still go back to those moments um, in my art. And they might have... Um, I don't know, it just might be a place that I go to when I'm camping or a place that I go to when I don't feel like getting like really physical with my work with paint and brushes and cleaning and all that that entails. So this, digital art. So those days that I do have the energy to make a bigger piece that might look like um, mixed uh, media, it could be all paint on a canvas, all paint on a paper, whatever. Those are the background, and then those that we just spoke of, the sketchbook stuff, are a bit of the foreground detail, and they merge digitally. So, next slides I'm gonna show you is a few of these pieces that I've done digitally, and you'll recognize a few if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook. So, I'm gonna show you today how you can merge those two worlds. So this piece is one I wanted to just mention briefly. Um, 
I'll come back and talk more about this piece later, but this is a digital mashup of a two-dimensional newsprint painting with a photograph and they were combined digitally. I really loved this piece and I thought, why don't I try this in the real world of two-dimensional art? And so this was the version I created two-dimensionally. So it actually still has the original paper drawing that was collaged in and it was spliced in and created um, layered with more mixed media pieces and then I did um, an image transfer this piece is 30 inches by 24 inches and so um, yeah this afforded that this whole process afforded this really cool response um, I can discuss more with this in a different tutorial but just wanted to touch on this We are on my desktop of my iPad Pro and I will walk you through um, how to do the digital mashup yourself. So the um, program is Adobe's Photoshop Mix. We're going to go into one of my folders, Adobe Sh Adobe's Photoshop Mix and opening that. And here is my gallery of previously created works. Um, these can be quite sizable. I'm not going to open them because they do take a little bit of time to download and then open. But um, on the left side of the screen, you will see a plus. And if you clicked on the plus, it will open a new um, project. So if you want to start with a custom canvas size or just start with an image and let the image um, predict what size the canvas should be, either or are fine. Or of course, you could start with a camera um, um, lens and take a picture of something right in the live. So we're going to go ahead and start with custom canvas. We can call it something, we'll call it tutorial, and we're going to allow the pixels to be, um, well, let's see, let's make it a smaller one just so it's a bit more nimble today. So a thousand pixels by a thousand, and we'll hit create. Now we're into the um, I forget what they call this, artboard. And so you can pinch to zoom in and out and place your canvas where you would like it. Um, you have a crop feature, so you could crop um, your piece. You have on the top right hand side of your toolbar, you have undo and redo, and you have layers showing. Um, this program actually has multiple layers, which is amazing. And then the box with the arrow out in iPad land gives you the options to save um, your project to um, your camera roll or to other platforms. And um, the first thing you'd probably want to do is import an image. So the plus sign on the right hand side of the screen. And I will generally start my process by going to add image. And it takes me to my camera roll on this particular iPad. So um, you can also go to your camera roll, your Dropbox, all these other features, Facebook even. Um, so the first thing you want to do is to grab a background and sometimes I just choose intuitively and so here's one to start with. This is a drawing of mine and uh, it wants to know if we want to resize the canvas. I'm going to say no because I don't want it to be like a really high res just so it we're no more nimble for this tutorial. So I'm going to say cancel and then I'm going to expand the um, image and decide where I'm liking it to land. And um, again, I, I like to start um, and produce art intuitively. And so some of it's composition and some of it is just intuition. So um, there's some pieces of this um, abstract that I really love. And for this body of um, tutorial, I kind of want like some action items so we can um, see the benefits of mashing your art up. So I'm going to bring the piece to the bottom and be good with that. So you can see the bounding box on the outside and if I just tap the black artboard it goes away um, and now I'm moving the entire um, canvas around and pinching and zooming and if I want it to be active again I press the image layer box on the right hand side of the screen 
and I can choose to resize again. Um, so when you want that bounding box to go off, just tap outside of the bounding box, because if you tap, tap inside, it's going to move it around. So there you go. First thing you've learned. So I'm going to press the plus sign on the right hand side of the screen to bring in a secondary image. And I'm going to have to go back a layer and I'm seeing this Instagram piece. Um, so I'm going to bring that in and again hit the cancel button so I'm not resizing. So this has a lot of noise on it and that's going to be okay for this program and actually a perfect piece to um, teach you guys on um, some of the features of this really robust and free program. So you can see the blue bounding box with the four um, dots to resize so you can click and drag on them and you can also hit the crop on the left hand side and now we're working with an entire canvas crop. I don't want to do that right now but that is something you can play with so I'm going to X out which is on the bottom left and see by just doing that um, we have two different sized images and that's okay so it, it's quite obvious that if I want to um, select this image I would click this box but if it gets complicated just look at your layers on the right hand side of your screen and select the layer by touching the box of squares on the right hand side of the screen and now I can change um, and select the size I want. So uh, you can play composition right now if you want. Um, but again, for the sake of tutorial, I'm going to leave it so that you can see its edges. I'm going to go to the bottom toolbar and go to cut out with the scissors on it. Once you get into this screen, the left hand side of the screen is an add and subtract. So you can add or subtract a layer of um, content from this image, um, cutting it out. And the bottom of the toolbar says, do you want to use the auto feature or the smart feature or the basic feature or the lasso or the shape cutout or a refine? So um, I basically use the smart at the beginning. And so I'm going to hit subtract and you'll see that the icon gets white and I'm going to draw my finger on the screen and do you see that? It's deleting content from this image and it's kind of taking it in chunks because it's reading like-minded pixels. So that big black piece, and I'll redo this just so you can see. So I touched it once and it took it away and I'll touch and drag a little bit. So I'm sliding my finger on the screen to remove away the noise of this background. And of course, this is a drawing of mine that I did years ago with a really bad picture for um, any useful purposes. Who knows why I kept it, but today we're going to use it. Um, and again, I'm wanting to take away anything um, that is just sort of visual noise. Do you see how it just um, ate away, munched away the little white pixels all the way around to her top knot on her headscarf. So that's kind of cool, right? I love that. And I'm liking the square of the sheet of paper up on the top right. I'm going to leave that for a bit because maybe it will help me in um, other parts of my digital drawing. So again, I'm just sort of taking away the harsh um, paper line to get this jaggedy line. And so if it's too jaggedy, there's a way to go and soften that line. So you can go to basic and then you get a brush and you can change the size of your brush to make it bigger. So if you um, want a bigger, smaller brush and, oh, sorry, no, that's the plus and minus there are um, to add and subtract the content. And so why would you want to add? Like if you wanted to add this piece back, now you've got my finger stroke of additions back and to make it make more sense to you there I've completed it and now it's sort of feeling like a paintbrush sort of air gun like thing so you can change the hardness of that by clicking on the hardness button click and hold it and then drag it up and down on your screen then you get from 100 down to zero and the size of your um, tool brush so if you wanted to get really micro you could 
and there you are. So I'm going to go undo until we get back. And this um, has a ton of undos. So it's kind of cool when you're doing work like this. Um, so I'm using the brush now instead of that auto chunking and I can change how soft the chunks are, which is kind of a cool feature to use. See, it's not like a hard line there. Instead of this, see the difference? So I'm just softening that line. Sometimes the hard line I keep in because it feels necessary. So it's just up to you and your creative edge that you've got. Now I'm just slowly nudging my little finger towards her neck. And yeah, I do have a stylus, but um, for this video, the noise is sort of distracting. So I'm just using my finger. So that's why you can just use your iPhone with this. So there you go. Now I've decided to take that chunk off because it's just too much fun to not eat away at those little microbes. Okay, so we're getting closer. Now this is where you can actually um, pinch to zoom in and out to get better detail. Okay. And I could go into the smart feature and um, try to chunk away some of that, but I'm feeling pretty good about that. So um, I'm going to hit check mark bottom right hand corner to leave this screen. And um, by the way, the three stacked pieces of paper top right, if you, um, oh, if you click them once, you can see what it was like with its full background in behind. So tap it again and it comes back. So we're gonna check mark out of here. So now I'm gonna pinch out on my um, artboard, but to do that, I have to um, not be touching any of the layers. So outside of the artboard and um, there we go. So I can pinch out my working screen. And now I have to make sure that I'm going to be working on the lady layer that I click on her. So she is selected. The first thing I want to do is play with her look, um, adjust the colors. So go through, and this is just like, I pressed auto fix, um, contrast. I just kind of like slide around, see what I like. Um, just change the picture up a bit. This is like the best thing about having a copy of your own art because you're not gonna um, damage the original because it resides somewhere else in a sketchbook. So I kind of like that just as a starter. And of course I want to um, zoom out so I can see. I'm going to tap back on her. I'm going to expand her and just sort of play with the curve of her neck and that's blue spot here. It's kind of cool. And if you click on and like a long press on that mix layer, you can um, do things like copy it to the clipboard, duplicate it, um, all sorts of um, resizing and blending modes. So this is like a bit of your Photoshop um, throwback features here. And so you can see if you multiply lighten and screen, you're start start starting to see some of the kind of cool features of this program. The luminosity one's kind of neat because those marks from the abstract are coming through. Um, difference is sometimes always like an interesting place to go, but depending on how many layers you have, this is one that can get kind of crazy. Um, ooh, that multiplies kind of neat. And ooh, that's kind of neat too. Um, for now, I'm going to stay normal because I want to show you blend. So blend on the bottom right. And the same sort of features, right? As the other version of blend that we saw in the other. They might be identical. Um, and you can play with like the opacity, so bring it down or up. I'll give you a better example. So you hold and press and then click and drag to see it go from 100% down. Kind of cool. 
Okay, so X out to like leave and not make any changes. And click on her to make some more changes. So this was looks and as you can see, it's just giving you the option of other um, layers. This is a grainy film layer. Oh, that's pretty. Sorry guys, I have a cold. It's not the big virus cold. It's like a sinus dust cold. I've been cleaning at my mom's house and uh, it's very dusty and dirty and such in there. So you can even have this smart feature where you're only going to attach some of that layer's qualities and you can invert them and reset them and you can add or delete them. Dudes, this gets so crazy. Um, and you'll see why I find this kind of a good thing to do, especially when you're convalescing. So we're going to just, for fun's sake, add another layer. But first, we're going to take a break. Digital art tutorial using Photoshop Mix. So what we've learned so far is how to bring in multiple layers and adjust them based on um, cutting out the backgrounds using the cutout tool with the scissor icon at the bottom, how to adjust their image using um, the looks button. Um, you can also use the adjust button and um, control the, the um, highlights and or low lights shadows, even the clarity, so making it really crisp and more grainy um, or softer. And you can just keep playing, massaging out the filters, the details. Um, we have learned the blend tool, which helps to um, merge the multiple layers that you have. And just as a recap, um, it's a great idea to just keep adjusting um, and undoing if you don't like it. And um, if you're feeling overwhelmed, just take a break and come back to it. Um, because the perspective of um, a refreshed vision is always really important when creating and even digitally. So um, I kind of like this. I'm going to leave this here. So um, again, um, to pinch and zoom. So you want to not have a bounding box and not be selected on any of the um, square boxes on the side so nothing is highlighted on the right hand side and you can pinch and zoom on the dark charcoal black background here and so you can kind of get some perspective on your image so since last coming um sorry so since the first section of tutorial i did play a little while because i was feeling a little bit stuck on this image and wasn't really sure did I have the right images and you will find that happens to you and honestly it's just about trusting yourself and keep pushing the buttons and adding layers and undoing and seeing what happens and what ifs just like regular art so um and so what I decided was there is there is some benefits of me continuing with this piece I might not show you every single step that I do to get there because it would be a super long video. Um, I can spend what looks like hours on these images and sometimes I get so lost in them. Um, it's really surprising to me and I almost don't want to admit how long I spend, but obviously that's some really great mindful time just um, zenning out on an iPad in a comfy spot in your home or studio. So to just... Um, just show you a few more things as um, a piece like this develops. I wanted to bring in a second image and um, and so I did and I don't know how it's going to affect now but again um, let's go see how this works. So as you can see I tapped on the top bounding box we, and we get a bounding box on the image and it's got a eye and a slash through it that means that layer is invisible. So you can double tap on it and it brings it um, so that eye goes away. So it is a visible layer now. 
So this is quite yellow and it's quite burned out. So I could play with the exposures, but again, sometimes it's worth just seeing what happens when you blend it. So I tapped the blend icon and um, I'm just seeing, so that darken, it didn't, it didn't really do anything. Um, let's see, let's go through the undo and the redo. So yeah, not too much. And then that layer, you can see the, um, the multiply and that yellow kind of burns through it's interesting that could be a possibility sometimes I'll like say the layer in my mind or out loud just so that I'm remembering like if I go through all of these layers of different um, filters what well, which one did I like so um, sometimes repeating it out loud is a good little tip uh, again there's the furnace going on and that's kind of a cool layer too I like what it's doing on the bottom of her chest area so this might be something where you can go in and just apply and um, like erase and delete in other layers um, to gain some of those filters and effects I love these ones um, they take some work to get them looking cool because you might have to add a a third layer so that you get some of her details in but keep some of that crazy color that's down on her chest area um, so hopefully I'm inspiring some ideas um, here's an opacity um, layer here so maybe 100% is too strong but 47 is perfect it's kind of cool kind of a mocha color there um, and is it keeping? Yeah, it is. It's keeping the opacity on any layer at 47 now. So just going through down the line. I still kind of like that one. And there's normal. So that's where we started from. And at 100%, just to remind you where we were. So if I bring it back down. Yeah, they're kind of cool, hey? so many like sometimes I get overwhelmed with like oh there's like a hundred paintings in there that I could riff off of each one of those and so be it maybe you do so I'm going to just check mark out of that one and what else what I was going to do um let's see if we go to cut out and we go to subtracting on here um what happens see how I'm taking away some of that layers so this is what I was saying about adding and deleting some details once you get multiple layers in so you've applied a look or a filter and um, you want to keep some of it like that chest area that I was saying was kind of cool so I've erased around her face and her headscarf there right so she's just got that last layer on her neck maybe that's cool maybe just need a little connection there and I'm on the smart so smart layer versus basic smart is taking chunks of similar pixels basic I can paint in sections by my choosing and not by smart pixel um, similarities so if I want to add back in there's my size of my brush there's the feathering on the brush soft or hard lines and if I paint back a little bit into her shoulder line that's kind of neat hey like um, and then subtract some of that outer area so again in light of um, not painfully watching every choice I make creatively I'm just gonna leave that there and check box out um, and I want to show you how you know bring in a totally different item so if you know my work, you know I love drawing flowers, I grow flowers, I take pictures of them, and then in my um, quiet moments, I draw them when I'm camping or not well. So where are they? Maybe in art, and you can see a lot of art here. I'm documenting my process or document finished pieces from years and years. Um, so I wanted to grab some black and white flowers to put in with this piece. Um, and I don't know, like all of a sudden I'm thinking this, 
piece is kind of cool. So resize canvas, no, I'm not going to, um, because the resolutions are different with all these layers. So it's just asking if you want to deal with that. So um, there's a bounding box on these flowers. And as you can see, this is just like a, a rudimentary sketch. I didn't finish it. Um, I took a photograph of it from my sketchbook. There it sat in my iPhone. And sometimes I will image transfer these in two dimensional collage, but now I get to image transfer them in a sense through digital collage. Um, so here it is on the top of the four boxes and it's got a blue bounding box on the side. Um, to, uh, what is this called? Ooh, toolbar. And then we have the flowers and so we can scale up and down by dragging that bounding box circle. And we can do one of two things. We can just blend it and you can see those the square lines of the bounding box. It's really clear of like, okay, that's not working, right? So if we X out of here and we go into the cutout mode, we go into the potentially the smart um, mode I go to quite often first and just eat away at the paper part and it cuts right around the petals. Isn't that amazing? It's so satisfying. Um, sometimes I like leaving a little bit of the paper background and oddly enough I do that um, in my image transfers that are two-dimensional with paper too. I kind of like a little bit of the tattered, you know, uh, I guess some of the knowledge that where it came from I guess. It's interesting. But this time that just looks too cool to not just say yes to that. So check mark out of there. So that is um, a layer with no, no blending, no um, adjusted looks. So let's maybe for a change, hit the adjust and we'll just hit auto fix. So there you go. It goes into a very white and black mode. That's great. Um, sometimes it's nice just to get like that. Um, maybe there's some shadows that are making inconsistencies on the white paper of your scans. So um, when you go in to adjust the layer of contrast and exposures, that's what you're really ultimately affecting is some of those nuances because it is not a vector image that was created online. Here's highlights. It drags about and it's not making any difference. Um, if you notice there's some lag in your, um, tools. This program is robust and it's taking a lot of um, power from your monitors for your computers. So I'm noticing some lag there. So I, I probably will um, have to shut down this tutorial and just do a little refresh so that all of RAM and all those technical bits can catch up. Anyways, I'm going to say yes, check mark to that color. And then before we go, I'm going to blend. So I'm just hitting overlay. I'm hitting screen, multiply. Ooh, see that one knocked out all the white and I say yes to that. So I'm going to hit check mark and now adjusting it. So you can use your fingers and two fingers just to move it around the page or one finger to move it around the page, two fingers to spin it. Um, so I'm just using two fingers, my thumb and my finger and just spinning it there. And now, expanding, um, shrinking, just to sort of play around with it. Now, if you were to grab the square box on the side toolbar and hold it until it kind of shivels there and then scroll down and drop it, now it's one layer lower. And to really amplify what I'm saying, now it's below the lady or ladies and see that one edge is sort of fogged out. That's kind of cool, hey? So right now the bounding boxes on the side are saying that I'm on the bottom layer. I want to touch the mix layer, which um, pertains to the flowers so that I can adjust and move that. Now, because this looks kind of cool, I'm thinking let's duplicate layer. So I tapped once, went into that menu and said duplicate. So it's going to put it in the exact same position, um, which is handy sometimes because if you were to do some blends, you can kind of play with um, 
how it's going to look. And um, so again, just giving you some ideas. And X out and grab those flowers, drag them somewhere else, shrink them, spin them so they don't orientate exactly and look like twins. And I'm going to tap on the um, square. And you see how I went to the original spot? That's the original flower. So I want to tap on the right layer, this one. I'm going to tap again. And I want to flip it so that it's oriented differently. Again, just giving some variety. Tapping on the flowers on the page, on the art page, versus the box, because I knew that's where they were. When it gets like, when you get multiple layers, it gets a bit confusing. And so just tapping on the boxes on the right hand side might be easier. So look at that. Let's do this again. Tapping on the smaller one, duplicate. There it goes. Um, on the new layer, and I'm gonna spin maybe make them smaller. We'll see here. I kind of like that. It looks kind of cool. So again, if I want to zoom out, tap on the artboard where there's no bounding boxes, pinch in. That's looking kind of cool. So I'm going to play with this offline for a little while just um, and I will show you my completed piece later. Thanks.